Hey up and uh, welcome to another restrap bikepacking guide. Today we're going to look at some, some general maintenance tips really for your bike. Uh, we're filming this as we're getting towards the end of summer so fingers crossed you've been out there for the last few months enjoying some bikepacking trips. Bikes may be getting a little bit tired so some stuff to look at um, just as we're going into winter really but most of the tips are going to be relevant uh, even before you're setting out on a bikepacking trip as well so we'll just uh, take a look over the bike and, uh, and start ticking off some uh, some points this is yeah this is my own bike at the moment um, and I think first of all we'll start off with the tyres so first thing to, to do is just check to see how worn they are. Um, if you've been riding it all summer long, then particularly the rear is likely to, to begin to get a little bit worn. One tire in general means that you've got a little bit less grip and you're probably a bit more likely to get a puncture as well. So it's, it's definitely something that's worth keeping an eye on. While we're on tires, I run tubeless. Um, personally, I've, I've run tubeless for about 10 years now and I just find it that much more reliable. Um, one of the other benefits is that you can run lower pressures as well. But there are a couple of downsides to it, depending on, uh, on the way that you see things. One is that it can be a little bit more faff to set up. Um, generally, once it's set up and once it's rolling, then it's brilliant. And there have been times that I've taken a tyre off when it's come to the end of its life and only then found that there's multiple little pinprick holes in there that with a normal tube um, I would have got a puncture and it would have stopped the ride and I've been able to continue on. Uh, one of the downsides is if you do get a puncture that's too big for the sealant to seal, uh, occasionally it can be a bit of a faff sorting that. There are ways that you can get around that, um, but ultimately you may need to put a tube in and then it gets a little bit messy. Um, but as I say, it's definitely something that's worth doing a bit of research into if you haven't used tubeless before and maybe think about it for, for next time. While I'm down here actually, you can see I've actually got a bit of masking tape. Uh, occasionally I run a front rack here and this is just to protect the frame. One thing that Restrap does is bicycle protection kit. And this is gonna go on my bike after, uh, after today. And just a little bit more aesthetic than, uh, than insulation tape, isn't it? Some nice contours there. These are just peel off stickers in various sizes to cover various parts of your bike. <coughs> and it's really important to put it in places like this where on a completely dry day then the straps may wear a little bit of paint but particularly in wet muddy gritty conditions then you can imagine a little bit of sand gets under there and it will wear away paint metalwork carbon potentially as well so it's really important to, to make sure you're protecting your frame i think one point that's worth making is that riding off-road in general uh, and particularly bike packing it's inevitable that at some point you're going to get some scratches and marks on your frame. Frame protection like this is a really good way of mitigating against it, but it's never ever going to be perfect. There's always going to be a spot that you've missed slightly. Um, so, I mean, as you can see from this bike, I've got scratches and scrapes all over it. And I actually kind of like that. I like that each scrape is, is another story. It's another trip. Um, so I'd, I'd always rather have a, yeah, a used bike than a pristine bike, but it's, it's something that's worth bearing in mind. As well as the actual bike, it's kind of worth actually checking your luggage as well. Um, really lovely thing that I, I really like about Restrap is it's, it's properly built to last. Um, but every now and then things can go wrong. Plus side is you've got a lifetime warranty uh, on any of your products. So if when you are checking through there's an issue, then please do let us know and we'll sort it out. And we also have a repair service that's alongside that as well. But as I say, you shouldn't really have any issues here. But some of the things that I, I tend to, to look for uh, making sure that the zip still runs smoothly. What can happen is if you've super overpacked the frame bag um, to the point that it's bursting at the ginnels, then that's not particularly healthy for the for the zip. So one of the things that I always also do is just double check my dryer bags every now and then to make sure I haven't managed to put a nick in it or puncture it in any kind of way. Um, it's fairly obvious that obviously if there is a hole, then they're not that waterproof anymore. And I have found out the hard way on occasions and ended up with slightly damp kit 
but realistically that's probably it for for checking over the luggage obviously double check straps and things like that make sure they're not frayed but again they, they shouldn't really be it should be fairly obvious if there's there's anything that you're not happy with there another thing to to, to in general regardless of what braking system you've got is just to double check uh, a few things first of all making sure that your brake pads have got plenty of life left in because the last thing you really want to be doing is changing brake pads in the middle of a, a ride. Occasionally you need to do it and I'll always bring spares but it's just one of those faffs that you shouldn't need to have to go through. Different brake systems, so I run hydraulic disc brakes on every single one of my bikes now. Um, I guess because I've got a mountain bike background it's something that I've, I've got used to. Some massive advantages it, to it for me, A, power, reliability and modulation um, so that's how you can apply the power is just second to none with hydraulic and it remains consistent all the way through pad wear so even if compared to cable disc brakes where you have to constantly adjust them there's no need with a hydraulic brake at all um, so it's absolutely great for that particularly when you're bikepacking you've got so much extra weight on the bike that creates more momentum and you just want more stopping power and a disc brake is much better at that in dry conditions and then in wet conditions, it's even more so. Um, rim brakes are pretty ropey in the wet, even when you're uh, even when you're unloaded. So again, just being able to stop and know that you can stop and have consistency in that stopping as well is is really really useful. So I think you know if you've got a disc brake, so if you've got a rim brake bike, then fantastic, use it and you will have a great time on it. If you've got a choice or if you're looking at some upgrade at some point, then I think disc brakes and particularly hydraulic disc brakes are, are something that's worth going for. So there we have it really. Um, some super simple, really basic maintenance tips and tricks, uh, which probably apply a little bit more to, to bike packing, but, but equally apply to, to cycling in general. Uh, now that we're getting towards the end of the summer season, then uh, maybe dig out the bike and, and have a quick look before, uh, before you head out on your next trip. <laughs>